So battery day just concluded a few minutes ago. Um, totally amazing. Definitely uh, a couple surprises, not a whole lot of surprises. Um, I was hoping to see a little bit more. There's uh, some things that I was hoping to hear about, but um, going through it, the, the things that were not surprises, one, uh, the tabless electrode battery, the large, for, larger form factor of the battery cell, uh, more silicon in the uh, battery chemistry. Uh, those things were kind of already suspected, hinted at, that already people had speculated on that that was going to be in there. Those were no surprises. The Plaid Model S was another one that was not really surprised, but definitely a very exciting unveiling. Um, I was looking through my Twitter feed uh, while that was happening, uh, and within the first less than five minutes after he announced, uh, after after Elon announced that hey, you can order it now. Less than five minutes of that, I counted six people on Twitter had ordered theirs. So, um, car sales are, are not weak at all. Um, that car starts at $139,000. I went through and kind of went through the order process on the website just to see. Obviously, it's not a car that I could afford. However, um, with the all the options that I wanted, I was looking at $155,000, $2,200 a month for my uh, monthly payment and um, that would be a lot of fun but uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen um, anyway so that was that was a big uh, that was kind of the the grand finale of it they kind of uh, put the cherry on the cake you know, whatever uh, frosting on the cake with that thing um, but other than that the, as far as going back to the battery cell um with a tabless electrode and the larger form factor for the battery, so they announced it was a 4680, so 46 millimeters in diameter, 80 millimeters length uh, for the battery cell. That's uh, approximately five times um, greater energy density uh, than the 2170s. Uh, yeah, five times uh, the volume. So with that, they were able to make the pack a, a bit smaller, um, and that brings the weight of the pack towards the center of the car, which decreases the moment of inertia, um, which increases the handling and the safety of the vehicle. It makes it harder to spin out of control. It makes it uh, more agile, nimble, uh, corners better, all those uh, things, which definitely increases the safety of of the vehicle, so that's going to be exciting when that comes out. Now these these uh, announcements are going to take um, anywhere from a year and a half to two years to to scale to production volumes. But nonetheless, if, um, they did reveal that you know, they are well on their way to uh, making this a reality. We should see this by the end of uh, 21, uh, 22. So uh, I think we'll start to see these batteries coming out in the Cybertruck and definitely in the compact car, whatever they're going to call that, people call it the Model 2 or the Model C, whatever, uh, Model 4, whatever it happens to be, but uh, whatever their compact, affordable car, they announced that they're, they should have no problems getting to a uh, mass production small car at a $25,000 price point or less. Um, and that would be fully autonomous with, uh, with long range and all that good stuff. So that's exciting. Uh, I'm not sure. They didn't reveal what it's going to look like or anything. I was hoping to see that. Um, but I think there's still a way. I know it's being designed in China, in, in the Shanghai uh, facility. They put together a design team, design facility in China. And um, I know that the design team there was instructed to build something extremely out of the box, um, kind of the, in the same way that Cybertruck was very much outside of the box. So it's going to be something that looks probably unlike anything we've ever seen. Um, definitely it's going to be 
form following function, so that's why the Cybertruck look, looks the way it is. Um, so it's not like they're going to, you know, produce a passenger car that's a shrunken down Cybertruck or anything. Now, it may be stainless steel, um, which would give it the flat panels because uh, they don't stamp the stainless steel. And with stainless steel, there's no paint shop, there's uh, no painting process, which will greatly reduce the production costs. So that would be a great way for them to get the price of a you know entry-level electric vehicle with autonomy um, at a very good price point where the world can afford it. So it may be stainless steel, and I, I bet it probably will be. And so it kind of will look like a cyber truck, I think. But um, but who knows? I think I think it's definitely going to be flat paneled and stainless, um, just because of the um, the cost constraints that they want to implement in order to make it affordable. So. They did give a, a glimpse of the battery factory, um, the process, they explained the entire process of how the cells are produced and what the challenges were and how they overcame them. Uh, the tabless electrode was fully explained um, and that, again, I, I've explained that in a previous video, but basically instead of you know having these sheets that are rolled up into a tube uh, where you have um, the anode electrode on one end of the sheet and the cathode on the other so that you have an electrode coming out of the center of the coil and one coming out of the outer edge of the coil you actually have the entire bottom edge of the cylinder and the entire top edge of the cylinder serving as those electrodes um, and that greatly shortens the path that the electrons have to make in order to flow back into the cell and that reduces a lot of heat the, the big thing that I think is totally revolutionary is kind of along the lines of the Cybertruck where they decided we're going to build a truck, but, you know, most, uh, well, every truck that's ever been built has been built on covered wagon technology. Basically, they have a chassis uh, with four wheels on it and the drivetrain, and then they put the cab and the cargo bed on top of that chassis and, and so literally the, the passenger compartment and the bed the cargo bed are actually cargo for the vehicle itself and they decided to get away from that when they did the Cybertruck and basically made the body of the truck serve as the actual structural frame and component for the vehicle so there is no underbody there is no um, chassis that has a body bolted onto it the body you see on the Cybertruck is the actual body of the of the is the actual chassis. So that eliminates a lot of parts, a lot of weight, and a lot of and it simplifies the the construction. And what they talked about is right now uh, Tesla vehicles have a battery that is actually cargo. It, it's there's a chassis that holds the battery pack onto it and your car is hauling around you as cargo and whatever's in the trunk, whatever's in the front, and it's hauling around the battery as cargo. And that's gonna change um, from now on. Uh, the battery pack itself will be structurally, a, a structural component of the vehicle uh, with the cells, you know, the cylindrical cells sitting vertically up and down. The, the metal tube that the cells are rolled up into are actually um, structures that will transfer shear forces from one side of the battery, or you know, from the top of the battery compartment or battery pack to the bottom, or vice versa. So it will actually um, improve safety and actually serve as part of the, you know, uh, system for transferring force away from passengers and um, the, the occupants of the vehicle. In the event of a collision, so and probably other forces as well, just the regular you know stress stresses from accelerating, turning, etc. That those, those uh, cells will actually um, serve as structure, and so the entire battery pack, I think, is basically going to be the bottom of the car. You're not going to be sitting on a battery pack which is sitting on top of the floor of the car. 
the, the battery pack will be the floor of the car. Um, great way to eliminate, they said that doing this is going to eliminate 360 parts and, uh, and reduce the mass of the vehicle by 10%. So you figure, I don't know what the vehicle weighs, but say if it weighs 3,000 pounds, it's going to shave off 300 pounds or something. So uh, that, again, is going to increase range, and it's going to uh, decrease the price, and it's going to increase safety and the agility and uh, uh, you know, basically the, the handling characteristics of the vehicle. So that's exciting. Um, the advancements in full self-driving uh, they talked about the uh, private beta is rolling out by the end of this year and that is a complete rewrite of the software stack for full self-driving so um, what that means is all the way up until now they basically you're, you have eight cameras on the vehicle that are constantly looking at um, the objects around you and identifying those objects using artificial intelligence um, and basically when it sees an object, it recognizes it, what it is, and whether it's something that needs to be um, stopped for, maneuvered around, or if it's something that it can ignore, that it's not in the path, all that, all those sorts of things. Um, and up until now, it's done this on a still frame basis. So basically, if you imagine uh, a single frame of a video camera, it would look at that frame, label all the objects in that frame, and then the very next frame, label all the objects in that frame. And in doing that, they've had some, basically they, they, they said they hit a, uh, a wall as far as their ability to progress and grow in, in the AI. It was, it, they, they reached a limit of what it could achieve. And so now, uh, the new software stack it doesn't change any hardware but it's going to be labeling objects in real time for the video so not just a single frame but it's looking at the object and how the object moves over time and labeling it accordingly to that day so that's a huge leap forward and um, with that is that Elon Musk has been driving around on that personally with his cars um, and he said that he has, uh, this was in the previous uh, quarterly meeting, uh, he said that he almost always drives from work to, from home to work and, and back uh, on full autonomy with no interventions. And that's like out of the driveway to the house to, to the parking lot of work uh, with no driver interventions. Now, uh, driver intervention is when uh, the driver touches the wheel of the car to make a correction. Every time the, the car is self-driving and the uh, driver makes a correction, the artificial intelligence uh, basically looks at that moment and tries to learn from it. So those, those moments are captured and sent to uh, the uh, cloud, I guess, the uh, whatever you call it, uh, the, the mothership, to learn why that intervention was necessary and how to react next time it sees that same thing happen again. Um, those interventions, the number of interventions has been greatly re reduced by this uh, 4D labeling technology. So that's going to be exciting for a lot of people that are going to be beta testing that. It's a private beta test, so I don't know how that works or how who's selected to do that. But I think um, he said that it should roll out within a month. So that's that's awesome. Uh, hopefully we'll see it roll out to the public uh, before the end of the year. But that's absolutely incredible. Um, the Plaid Model S, holy shit, uh, you're looking at 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, top speed of over 200 miles an hour. And... Um, a range of 520 miles. I haven't, I didn't see the interior, they didn't show the interior of the vehicle. That's going to be available next year, towards the end of the year, but it's available now for a pre-order, $1,000 van. And, uh, 
Um, like I said, within five minutes, I saw six people on Twitter posted their um, order confirmations that they had ordered those. So, uh, pretty amazing. Um, I think the next year for Tesla is going to be leaps and bounds better than the last. The last one was just absolutely mind blowing. So, definitely recommend the stock. Um, the stock has been was flat today. Uh, it started selling off a little bit, not much, but it sold off a little bit. I think under like seven or eight percent in after hours trading. Um, but I think the people doing the after hours trading and all that don't tune into battery yesterday. They don't see the big picture, or they're um, uh, confused by the technological jargon that's being used. I thought they did a good job of explaining it to, in lay terms. But um, but I don't know I don't know I don't understand these institutional events, uh, investors um, you know these are the same people defending Nikola you know CNBC is defending Nikola and um, Trevor Milton has basically shut down his Twitter and probably Instagram too um, I think he's probably out of the country but but anyway uh, they're buying Nikola and selling Tesla. Um, I think this is a great contrarian play if you want to make money. Uh, if you want to lose money, go with what Wall Street's doing. So, anyway, uh, that's my take on Battery Investor Day. Uh, the, I was not disappointed at all. I, I, there was a few things I would like to have seen, but uh, there were some good surprises as well. So, I'm not disappointed. I'm definitely excited about what's to come in the next few months and definitely in the next year. So, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you watch it? Um, what are your questions? I, I can answer some uh, technical questions um, regarding the batteries or whatever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, feel free to leave any comments or questions below. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll be doing more content and definitely improving the quality of the content over time. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Talk to you later.